Alexandria is under siege and the Carthaginians finally take a look at the Jewel of the Nile. Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to another Total War Rome 2 online battle. Today we are diving back in with an epic siege of Alexandria. If you guys haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more online battles. I'm also in desperate need of battle replays. So if you have battle replays on Rome 2, Attila, uh, Warhammer, any Total War game and it's an online battle and it's a good one, send it in to me over on my Discord. I would really, really appreciate it appreciate it i'm gonna go ahead and pause the battle though as we have a little sally out right here by the spartans that are defending the grand city of alexandria and i get as i said like i always love fighting on a map like this because it just has that little extra bit of love added into the settlement that not as many of the room two settlements do have you know you have this really awesome river going out or i guess it's not really a river but yeah it's kind of like almost moat like uh defense kind of going throughout the settlement which looks amazing um, and then obviously you have the library uh, which provides some pretty fun engagements as well as you can land ships on all of this outward land mass right here which again adds some really extra fun and exciting battles but yes today we have a very exciting battle we have the Carthaginians who are set up with their mercenary Cretan archers their mercenary noble fighters their Libyan infantry and I believe they have some African uh, hoplites and also some uh, pikemen somewhere on the battlefield along with some artillery that is about to be absolutely smashed by the citizen cavalry from Sparta then supporting them we do have the boy one of my favorite factions in Rome 2 Total War. They have some axe warriors supported by some more Celtic bowmen and also some sword fellows, some of their top tier infantry who are just so colorful and happy. You know, these are the justice warriors of the old world indeed. And yeah, the boys are ready to dive into combat. I'll stop doing that now. Uh, they've got lots of siege equipment and they're ready to set siege to this grand city. So let's just kick this one right off. I was told that this battle is extremely close. It's a really rough start start for the attackers but it just goes down to the like it goes down to the last couple of men and it's just a really really good battle and i can definitely see why this is such a rough start for the attackers as immediately we are getting this beautiful cavalry charge out here by the spartan cavalry catching off this artillery crew probably taking down a handful of their artillery pieces almost immediately uh, actually maybe not maybe i think they might have just taken down one piece of artillery which doesn't sound like a lot it definitely adds up um, but that was a really nice move by the cavalry. They only lost three horses there, and they managed to completely pull out of that. And as I said, maybe two. I would assume that they've only lost. Uh, they've only lost one of these artillery pieces. We'll have to see. Maybe not even a single one, um, which obviously would be really good uh, for them. Yeah, just like they've, they've lost this far right one. Uh, maybe not, but maybe you don't need that many men to operate it. But either way, that was a pretty daring cavalry charge, and now the Spartan horse are just maneuvering around. Doesn't seem like there is much horse in the way of the attackers. And the Arvasi, which are the other uh, attackers, have also somehow managed to get this Iberian cavalry right round the back. And they're going to come flying into the Carthaginians in general. Do the Carthaginians not see these guys? I know the Arvasi have some guerrilla deployment and they've probably hid their cavalry around here. Um, whilst the guys were busy with the Spartans. And the Spartans come in with another charge off onto the mercenary Gallic Warriors, which again is a very vulnerable target to the cavalry charges just due to their light armor. They have good melee attack, but they can't really receive much in the forms of damage. So right now, the Carthaginian player is getting beaten up by just a handful of cavalry. And look at that, the Carthaginian general is very low. He's already lost 10 of his 40 men. That's a quarter of his cavalry. And if the Arvasi are lucky, they could cut the head off the snake right here and take care of the Carthaginian general. We'll have to see if that is uh, going to happen. But my god, um, yeah, I mean, that, that could have gone very bad with them. I, I assume they still have their general up because have, we haven't had any negative announcements. But yeah, very, very scary. And right now, the Spartan cavalry is still just hiding around this mountain edge. So, so far, a very, very exciting battle. And also, one of the things I love to see as more and more of the Arvasi units do come into view, uh, one of the things I love to see is like a sally out focused on one player because it delays the assault for the entire uh, attacking forces. Right now, the, the boy are going to be into the settlement 
way in advance, way before the Carthaginians have, meaning that this pressure is going to be a lot more intense so they can focus more of their forces on this side of the battlefield, uh, you know, for a couple minutes before the Carthaginians turn up and, you know, it's just going to basically delay this assault and make it really out of sync. And sometimes that can be really beneficial, but also other times that cannot be, you know, it can really come back to hurt them. So right now we're seeing the equipment being pushed up more and more of the siege towers ready to advance forward. I think they're waiting for the turtoids ram things to destroy some walls and then we're going to go on a full-on assault with the rest of their infantry just ready and actually i think maybe the boy are delaying their assaults as well just to give the carthaginians some extra time to move up because that cavalry did cause some huge issues um but yeah, they need to be very careful i don't think that spartan cavalry is maybe hiding and we need to be very careful because as you, as you can see, obviously their general is down to 26 men. A rear charge on that general unit would definitely see him taken care of. So they're going to have to really make sure that they keep an eye out for their Spartan cavalry. Maybe they did get rid of it, I just didn't see. But they need to be very, very cautious. As we can see, the main assault has now kicked off. The, uh, the rams are up on the wall. We're going to start smashing down these walls and bringing down the defences of Alexandria. The main assault force is pushed up. The siege towers are ready in position. And I think this was just a main delay to one, start destroying the walls, but also to allow the Carthaginians to also get their men up and into the battle. Which is obviously a smart idea. Kind of sync up the assaults. And there you go. The walls are starting to be broken down by these huge rams. Which, I mean, it does look kind of silly, right? Like, you know, this ram smashing down a piece of wall in like, you know, seven, eight strikes. Looks a bit silly, but hey, it is what it is. And right now, the defenses are pretty battered. Does seem like these uh, siege ladders, though, are getting a little bit set on fire. So they might need to be very careful there and actually push these bad boys up. Now that the rest of the assault has kicked off. You have a handful of these towers. It's not really doing too much right now. But more of the reinforcements are being thrown up. So I'm assuming we will see these going up very, very soon. Now that the rest of the walls have been hammered in. And the infantry are going to be the first ones through into this breach point. I can see we'll go the other side of that. And we can see them ready to push across here. A huge battering ram up there in the distance. And now the boy are going to come flying down onto the Arbasi front line. See the men coming down on both. And now the siege towers are being set forward on their opponents, ready to assault the wall. I love this all-out attack. You know, just, you know, biding your time, not committing, not overextending, and then just initiate this assault in one big go. And now the infantry are going to come flying through. They're going to be receiving missile fire from the slingers down there. The, uh, I assume they are going to be the Iberian slingers and immediately going to be looking to try and overrun these walls and push forward. More infantry going on under the walls as well. Hard fighting is going to kick off as the boy sword fellows take on the Iberian swordsmen. And the boys should definitely have the advantage in this engagement. But it's going to be a hard slog. More infantry flying through there. The javelins are as brutal. Over on the Spartan side of things, you can see the Carthaginians have now made their way to the walls. And again, these uh, these huge siege equipments, uh, the tortoise, yeah, they are but just tortoise, are now just destroying wall after wall after wall, creating many a breach right now, which is going to leave the Spartans in a tricky situation. As long as they can cover each of these breaches, their pikemen and their superior hoplites to do more than a good enough job. And you can see the pikes right here with the long sarissas ready to receive any assault that is thrown their way. But loads of these parts of these walls are being destroyed and that's creating a breach after breach. We do have the African pikemen who are going to maybe try and come up here and, and take down the Spartans. I imagine the Greeks will have the advantage in the pike warfare, but we'll have to see how that one do that does play out. You've got lots of infantry now completely forming up and ready to charge down. Uh, a pretty scary uh, pike wall. And oh my god, these Cretan archers are running. Oh my god, that's so lucky that they didn't seize the advantage right there as the Spartans push forward just to protect their archers and keep them alive. More of the defenders are now coming into view. And the artillery is going in and bombarding the mercenary Cretan archers. Definitely a smart unit to try and take down. Oh, and look at this. A unit of these mercenary Gallic warriors have got round the back and there's nothing stopping them. Um, and if they come flying into the rear of these pike men, there's a lot to them. This is such a, oh, that's a brutal volley right there. Um, and now we're going to come flying in. And this unit has a very high melee attack into the rear of pikemen. 
Yeah, this is definitely the breach that is going to go go down, I think, for the Spartans, if, if nothing else comes and supports this. And this is a really, really good move by the, uh, by the Carthaginians, because look at that, they've got a unit of cheap Libyan hoplites taking the, the pikemen from the front. And then they've got more of kind of an aggressive unit managing to outflank. And they could obviously do exactly the same right here as well if they wanted to bring out this unit from the uh, siege tower which i think they're bringing down right now yeah and that's going to probably come flying through here but oh my god look at that holy crap both these units are now breaking out of nowhere they have this spartan unit completely enveloped and now they broke that's uh brutal that really 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 is brutal over on the breach side of the barbarian front line we have the boy pushing heavily uh, against the enemies and obviously they're going to be taking a lot of missile fire coming in from the slings from the arrow fire because they're just in such an elevated position this is one of the dangerous things about coming through a breach is you're a lot more elevated from the you know from the defenders so that the missiles get a clean shot on their position as you can see right now these units of iberian slingers are having a pretty good time of things a clean shot right down this huge open field just allowing them to find their marks they are also breaking down quite nicely taking these towers and turning them on the attackers would be a pretty good idea and the boy are making progress lots of infantry pouring through and i think their main objective here is probably going to try and take this gatehouse um, it seems like the unit on the wall is struggling they really need this unit of sword fellows to win this battle because obviously as you can see you know if they don't win this battle that's going to allow these defenders to completely revamp their force we also have the noble horse up here as well so i imagine as soon as any of these breach points whether it's the gatehouse whether it's any of these breaches comes down this noble horse is going to come flying into the settlement and try and hit these guys oh and we have a unit of noble fighters being brought up on the arvasi side of things the Arvasi general is coming out to play and I imagine he's probably going to head towards the gatehouse or maybe one of these breaches that are looking a little bit scarier. Because as soon as a cavalry unit gets into the back ranks right here, oh baby, they're going to be able to hit these Balearic Slingers and take them down. Carthaginians have had to bring up their next force. Now there we go, the rest of the Spartan cavalry coming in. Uh, it seems like they're going to be getting bogged down now by the Libyan infantry boat. And the pikemen are going to be coming in as well. Uh, still going to survive though. If I was them, I'd be hunting for this general right now. You'd also go after these Cretan archers. There's a lot they could go after. I mean, honestly, I mean, that's going to be a beautiful charge. Maybe going after that general though would have been a better idea because look at it. It's so undefended right now. Oh, you could easily kill this general's bodyguard. Only 26 left. Unfortunately, but I mean, that cavalry is still going. Charge, charge. You can probably get a nice kill on him. I will have to see now, but javelin fire coming in now, and that's going to be scaring off the Spartan cavalry. But I mean, what a great unit that was. It really did prove its worth. Now, though, we're getting the Cretan archers being pushed up, and they're going to be trying to soften up this pike defense. Luckily, half of these pikemen are in the woods, so that's going to be giving them a little bit more protection from missile fire. But for the most part, the archers should be able to take out uh, a decent portion of these pikes. And we're still getting a pretty hefty engagement here with the phalanxes. The Spartan Hoplites going in against the heavier Libyan infantry. These are more like the Phoreos Reform Swords infantry. And we're actually going to create a quite nice gap here. However, there are plenty of more Spartans up here. A rally coming down from the general. And it looks like the boy cavalry are going to come flying into this battle. If they can bar find through their infantry, they're trying their best. Yeah, it would be better if we just take a look here. But yeah, the boy are going to come flying through and this general unit is being pushed in. And this can be very beneficial because the Arvasi don't exactly have the heaviest infantry holding this line. So this cavalry can do exactly what the player is doing. Luckily, the uh, Arvasi player is not going to be going down without a fight. And he's going to be plugging this gap with more and more infantry. But again, the infantry is not going to be faring too well. And the cavalry is going to be able to get some good rear charges off into the back of the Arvasi. You can see though they are just trying to completely bog down this cavalry and that's how you should play it. The noble cavalry have lost 10 men with this kind of pull through tactic but they're breaking more and more of the Iberian swordsmen. And if they can finish these guys off that would be really really beneficial. The noble horse though running on muck and uh, they're about to be trapped down but oh no this isn't good. If the Spartan player sees this, this Arvasi cavalry, I mean this uh, boy cavalry is completely segregated. Obviously it's going to be a beautiful rear charge 
into the missiles, and now we just need to run. They need to get the hell out of here before the Spartan player realizes. Because right now, he could be completely boxed in. If this player is paying attention, the boy, the, the Arvasi hold this, and they've got him, but it doesn't look like the Spartan player has noticed one bit, which is so bad. The boy general could just die here. It could quite easily box this in. And the Arvasi have quickly realized that they need to send more men back because the boy are breaking through. But I think killing that boy general would have just been so huge in the battle. But right now, the Arvasi are going to be just reforming, looking to outflank the boys where they can. The cavalry has just come back. Yeah, I don't think these players were in voice uh, because that would have been a perfect trap. You just set up a line there, set up a phalanx there, set up a phalanx here, and they could have completely done that. But right now, the boy general has just come in absolutely massive, killing that entire unit of Cretan archers, breaking a handful of the Arvasi units. Like, my god, this cavalry unit has done amazing. How many kills has it on? Over 180 already. That's pretty insane. And right now, the boy are making amazing progress. And look at that as well. We've got a mountable building. One of the only uh, garrisoning buildings in the entirety of Rome 2. Which is obviously such a shame. Because this is, would have been so cool. Having men fighting over buildings and strategic positions. Would have been really cool. And it would have been amazing for multiplayer. If you had like uh, the Shogun 2 dojos. Where you have like buffs and you know rally points and stuff. Where... You know, maybe you get more morale, you get more organization. Stuff like that would have been really, really cool. I don't know. They could have done a lot with it. You know, maybe like a resupply depot where your archers get their ammo back if you hold it and stuff. That would have been super, super cool. Stuff like that. But oh well. Um, going back to the battle, we do have the noble fighters now. The general coming in. And obviously they have a pretty good position here uh, with the slingers up on that building. Javelin throw going in onto the boy, but the boy are going to be returning that javelin fire onto the men at the gate. Uh, but oh, there you go. Javelin galore in this battle. The noble fighters getting stuck in. Obviously, the noble fighters being a very, very deadly, deadly unit. But it seems like the boy have done a great job of breaking through here. And they've basically got this settlement under their control, at least to their side. Over on the Spartan side, it looks like the Spartans are staying true to their nature. And they've managed to bog down the Carthaginians very heavily. But the Carthaginians are not going down without to fight and they're doing just a good job as the boy as they've managed to envelop this Spartan hoplite formation. The Libyan infantry coming in from the side to remove that frontal defense bonus that they have available to them and just taking down their numbers. But they are Spartans after all. Now another Spartan hoplite has now formed up and I imagine they'll be, they, they'll be tasked with trying to secure the flanks right there that's exactly what they're doing moving in secure that flank for the other spartan hoplites and now this is where the spartan hoplite does you know obviously succeed and excel it's from that frontal defense our breach point exactly that cretan archers shooting overhead taking away many of these libyan infantry very nice indeed and the arvasi general is very low now even with the support of his infantry. He did manage to rout, by the looks of it, a handful of the boy infantry. Um, but it's just not enough. The boy, though, did just lose another unit at the gatehouse. And that allowed him to take back his towers and allow the towers. And oh my god, the boy missile line is completely breaking. Are we going to get a mass rout here by the boy? I thought they were doing so successful. But they must have lost their general, right? Where's their general? Can we see him anywhere? Yeah, they must have lost their cavalry general. And all of a sudden, oh my god. So many men are breaking, and as soon as these towers start shooting down on them, yeah, that would be pretty scary. But I imagine also the noble fighter, if the general is still alive in this unit, he'll be going down. And then the Arvasi will be receiving just a big of a, a debuff as the Boyer are receiving right now. Wow, that break all of a sudden was just insane. It really, really was. You can see them taking them down. And these Arvasi men are holding on by the skin of their teeth. And now these towers are racking up some kills, which is going to be really, really beneficial for them. Yeah, the boy are down to a handful of men fighting in the streets. This unit trying to catch on to these Balearic Slingers. And I think it really comes down to army attrition right now. Any envelopment of a unit, I think, will be catastrophic at this point in the battle. It will just break it. And as you can see, the Arvasi are coming in to commit that with some more of these swords, even with the missile fire, bringing them down, Legolas! And Legolas finds the shot, saving this unit from breaking. 
I think if they were able to rear charge this unit of Axe Warriors, it would have been over. Can they do the next one, though? A unit of Valeric Slingers. Not going to have the same impact, but still going to be very effective right there. Oh my god, what a battle this is turning out to be uh, as the archers continue to fight. Obviously, the, the main fight is going to be over here in the Carthaginian side of things. The Carthaginians are breaking through the front line, getting a good charge off here onto the mercenary Rhodian Slingers as they flee for their lives. And the Spartan Pikes get up here, but the Spartan Pikes pathfinding, they're going to commit a little bit too far forward, and that's going to leave them very vulnerable. There is only 30 of them left, and the Libyan infantry are going to be able to get stuck in there. And obviously, you have the Heroes of Sparta as well, which is a super scary general unit. Very, very deadly. But this does open up a nice alleyway, and obviously, if this unit right here of Spartan Hoplites breaks, it's going to completely allow this unit of mercenary noble fighters through this gap and allow these two Spartan Hoplites to get completely enveloped. Oh, the enemy general is also engaged. This is pretty scary when your general only has 16 men left, because all it takes is a lucky hit, and you can lose your general just to some Cretan archers. Uh, general is going to fall back though. Uh, luckily, he is going to stay alive. And yeah, as you can see, that rear charge from the uh, Belaric Slingers did just break the infantry. When the battle really gets down to this and neither side has a general, like a literally one envelopment can just break even some of the strongest units. It gets pretty crazy when morale starts to dip and that uh, flanking really hurts out. But yeah, there you have it. The unit has now broken. The Spartan Hoplites are trying to filter back, but... Yeah, the envelopment is coming in. We have more of these mercenary Italian swords pushing in. And from what I remember, the mercenary Italian swords have a very, very high melee attack. So they're going to come flying in now. And this battle is going to devolve into, uh, yeah, you know, just a handful of men. Missiles moving in. Carthaginians have to be super careful with their general. A handful of archer fire still coming in from these Celtic bowmen. Just trying to break anything they can. There is also like one unit of fighting up here. This can be pretty influential, right? If it could come down, the missile fire tries to break through this hoplite wall. It can still be very, very useful. Bands of power is still dead even as well. Because, I mean, look at that. The Carthaginian morale is so close to like just dipping down and falling off. And vice versa as well. We even have a unit of mercenary Cretan archers back here who I think have been forgotten about right now and will probably come into play and actually be pretty big. Spartan Hoplite go on the offensive, which is never really a good sign, but they are Spartans after all, so who knows? They might be able to pull something out from out of nowhere. Again, that gap right there. could see infantry pour through. I think the main focus is trying to break this unit of Spartans right here, but yeah, as, as we're seeing, it's not an easy task to break the Spartans regardless of what you have in their rear. I mean, we're not Athenians after all, eh? <laughs> uh, but yeah, lots of infantry here that can now stop come through. Spartan Hoplites, more reinforcements coming down, but that's going to allow these missiles. And yeah, the Celtic Bowmen coming around. Really nice play here by the attackers, seizing them. They don't really have a lot of assets left on their, their side, but they're using everything to their advantage. And they're, they're hammering the Arvassi in the side. And that's going to free up an entire unit of sword fellows right here. And they managed to break more of the Arvassi. I think the Arvassi have one unit left remaining, um, and that's about it. Oh, the unit of the Spartan Cavalry managed to kill the artillery piece as well, which is good. More men moving in here as well. Probably the last unit of Royal Spartans. They just need to hold the Carthaginians, but as we're going to see, we can actually speed things up a little bit, I think, here. We can see the boy moving their missiles around, and I think these boys still have a hand uh, full of ammunition. Actually, they're going to try and take the city center, try and take get rid of that morale bonus that the, the enemy, the defenders, do have. So these, morale, these, uh, these capture points give a morale bonus. I'm not sure if it's going to tell me. Um, but yeah, by taking them away from the attackers, or it can actually be the central, no, this is probably the central point, right, by the palace. Yeah, but these outer points give a morale bonus to the defenders. Um, so if you take it, not only do you take the, take away the morale uh, bonus for the defenders, you also get a morale bonus yourself, which can be really, really clutch. Especially in a fight like this, where it's just missile on missile. Yeah, it does seem like the Arvasi Balearic Slingers are going to maybe come out on top of that. I think their morale is a lot worse. You know, it looks like that. By holding the central point, they probably managed to break that unit that was charging them. And now the Carthaginians are going to be pushing forward. This unit of swords can get stuck in against the mercenary Rhodian Slingers. 
The Spartan general, though, is fighting an uphill battle against pikemen. But the Spartans do not falter. Look at them go, man. Look at them Spartans. Fight on for honor and glory. Definitely did not just take a screenshot right there. For some reason, I can't change. I guess I could change the Steam screenshot button, but I don't really like to do that. Um, but yeah, for some reason, you can't change the, the jump to key in room 2, which is really weird. What makes you kind of jump to that predetermined spot. Don't really know why. Just means that taking screenshots is a little bit annoying. And there you go, the, the Celtic Bowman doing the Lord's work. But these Spartans might be able to break more of their enemies. I mean, I can't imagine you know, Celtic Bowmen are going to be able to defeat Royal Spartans. They'll do damage to them, of course. And there you go. The cavalry coming back in now. Perfect charge here. God damn it. Wrong one, wrong one. Good charge here, but again, stimming is going to be enough. I think the attackers they are edging this battle. Um, but then again, if all these Carthaginians break, then that's huge. Oh my god, look at that. The Royal Spartans are getting slaughtered by the unit of pikes. And especially now that we're going to be getting the unit of Celtic bowmen coming into the back. Yeah, these, these units are just getting slaughtered. The pikes doing amazing right there. And now all we have left is this unit right here. A great rear charge there by the free citizen cavalry bow trying to cause any routes. And I think now we're just going to have to wait for this last unit of Spartans, Royal Spartans, to be taken down. You've got infantry coming all around. They're just going to hold the line to the bitter end. Uh, yeah, they're going to be completely enveloped. Um, but it doesn't... I mean, apparently they hold for another three minutes unless there's another unit somewhere on the battlefield uh, which isn't breaking. This one unit is just going to hold. And it's actually breaking. Oh my god, imagine. Imagine if this unit of Royal Spartans... Because realistically, there isn't a lot left at either side. Like, we have... These guys could all break. You know, what's this unit of general... Oh my god, okay, we're not triple speeding anymore because maybe the Spartans are going to take this one. If they do, holy crap. They need to get out of range of this missile power for sure. Oh my god, I mean, I'm a pikeman. Pikeman are probably going to be the final nail in the coffin, but... Okay, well, we're watching this to the end because... Like, no more triple speeding, boys. Because if they, if they could break this infantry, which they definitely might be able to do, then all they have to do is try and envelop the cavalry. Obviously, that rear charge by the boy is brutal, but how's their morale looking? Mm, actually, their morale's pretty good. And now the pikemen are turning up. They can definitely finish off the, the sword fellows. Because they're going to break pretty soon. Unless there's like a rally or a headhunter ability going off there. The boy are going to try and retreat and they're going to save themselves for now. Yeah, these players are, are playing smart here. Even though the battle is almost assuredly won by the, the attackers, they're still playing safe. They don't want to overcommit here. They don't want to end up in a situation where they, they lose because it was looking like every, they could have been a mass route when we were in this position just a second ago. The boy are just getting them to turn their backs and finish them off. Okay, I think we're fine now. Um, I think this would have been a different story, though. If if the Spartan cavalry could have killed the enemy Carthaginian general, I think the defenders would have won. I think that was literally the turning point right there. If they killed the enemy general, like I think all of this would have routed a while ago. And then the, then the Spartans could have dealt with what was left of the boy. I honestly think that would have been the case. But right now, the Spartans are going to die, and that is going to be the battle. But oh my god. God, what an ending to this insane siege of Alexandria. Really, really cool battle. Thank you guys so much for sending in this replay as well. I think it was sent in by William, and it was quite an old replay he sent me, but I was just going through the Rome 2 list uh, right now that I have, because they're kind of the only replays I have left right now. So as I said, if you guys have the replay, send them my way, um, as I do really require them. Obviously, you know, make sure it's a good battle. Don't just send me in, in anything. Online battle, of course, and, you know, sieges are, are preferred, or scenario land battles are always cool as well whether it's like ambushes reinforcements um capture the flag you know cool kind of setups with armies on it, like kind of like predetermined talked about scenarios where maybe you have armies on different sides that are like coming in on one large force in the center or something you know cool land battle scenarios like that i'm always looking for as well you know where you guys kind of talk about it and create kind of a, a cinematic opening and then you play seriously after it's kind of started so yeah big shout out to the players it was a really really good one um thank you guys so much for sending this one in hopefully you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you guys in the next one